Welcome to my channel Dr. Munshi Nasser Scale Tone. How are you my dear learners? In this video, I am going to share an interesting story about Web of Science, Elsevier and Scopus. You know nowadays, we researchers always fighting each other to publish in a Scopus or Web of Science index journals, right? Now, very few of us know the history behind the Scopus, Elsevier and Web of Science publications, right? So in this video, I am going to talk about that particular history which I might find itself very interesting. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Now talking about the Elsevier, you know Elsevier is a widely accepted publication house and do you know how it starts? It starts in 1880 where a publication owner or publication house owner Jacobus Roberts, a Dutch company owner who used to publish the Dutch related publications like books and scientific articles. But it isn't easy. There are always obstacles to overcome. One of Elsevier's boldest risks as a company was publishing Jewish-German scholars exiled by the Nazi regime. Scientific progress was being crushed by prejudice and director Ted Klaus Consider this as a library where he actually accumulated all the books which is written in Dutch and he wants to sell those products to the people globally, especially the Dutch language speaking people. And gradually the company become a very large company. You see the Elsevier logo where it says the Dutch monogram, right? So that is the starting of the Elsevier publication house in 1880. Now after few years in 1960s, I mean not few years, it's a long time after 1880 to 1960, the publication house realized that nowadays it's very difficult for them to only publish Dutch related articles and during that time they expand their business into English, German and other languages and in 1960s they decided not only publish books and scientific articles they also started to index their library with many other tools and products published English translations of their vital work. It was a brave, innovative decision and ensured that groundbreaking knowledge reached a global audience. Such as scientific articles publication, then the research in multidisciplinary fields. For instance, if you consider after 1960s, Elsevier started to rigorously accommodating all the English speaking information and they want to sell it to the public in a global prospect. Now gradually day by day their business goes very high and wide range of subscriptions and they started this subscription in a very interesting way. They decided people will search their products in their own website in order to find the scientific publications or scientific contributions from different researchers and in order to do that, do that they connected different individual publication journals. For example, consider as a Uber company. Uber has its a company doesn't have a single car ownership. However, they are the largest car company where they rent the car for the people, correct? Similar like that, Elsevier started to connect the journals and the journals are trying to get the Scopus indexing so that they can sell and enhance their publication different type of journal and books correct after that in 20th century they decided that no more offline publication they are trying to use the online platform to search for their databases and as you know in any library there is a database so Elsevier started a database which is called a Scopus index database and before Scopus, it calls Science Direct Platform. So Elsevier created a platform called Science Direct where they disseminate their information all over the world online. People can access their products through online and it is not all the time free. These are costly 
and subscription base okay and in 2004 they decided that they will consider a new database called scopus and this scopus will be a multidisciplinary huge database of journals and scientific contributions from different researchers who are indexed and somehow connected to the Elsevier company. Now Elsevier not only previously only focusing on their own publications but after 2004 the Scopus will consider different publication houses giving them a Scopus indexing platform. So the Scopus index now become a global use of indexing anyone can connect the scopus index and then they can disseminate using the platform of elsevier company and this is how the elsevier company started their journey in 1880 then in 1964 they created science direct and then in 2004 they started an indexing called the scopus to give the people a platform to connect their platform to publish and disseminate scientific knowledges okay talking about web of science web of science is an interesting database similar to the scopus of elsevier it is a private company which started in 1964 web of science started the scientific publications just like a library which started in 1880s by elsevier and they have created a company called the Institute of Scientific Information, which usually we know as ISI. That company also similar to producing and publishing articles and books for the researchers. The sources is Web of Science. So what is Web of Science, I hear you ask? Well, it's an example of what we call a library database, which contains tons of content, particularly journal articles, Okay, gradually that company was hired by Thomson and Reuters. Thomson and Reuters they also enlarge the volume of their publication and scientific articles globally to sell their products. In 2004, they started a company called Web of Science under Thomson and Reuters. Just like the Scopus, Web of Science is a indexing or database or library database in other words we can say to get the access of recent scientific publications multidisciplinary information regarding research in 2018 the thomson and reuters sell their company and their databases to a new company called onyx company and the onyx company renamed this web of science database as clarivate analytics this clarivate analytics is nowadays named as a web of science as an alternative or as a rename of web of science nowadays almost 2500 journals and 35000 books are indexed in clarivate analytics not only that scopus also has almost 35000 journals indexing all over the world under their databases and these two databases are sometimes you know they are criticized by their monopoly business because the subscription of scopus and web of science nowadays clarified analytics are not free these are very costly subscription and people have to pay to get the subscription different universities researchers continuously doing their research and they are getting the advantage of that research these two company and they are getting those information and selling to the other universities and other researchers and these two companies are the leading publication houses as well as global index for researchers to access the research information i hope this is a very interesting story because everybody know that what is elsevier what is science direct what is the scopus elsevier is a publication house science direct is their first online platform in 1964 Scopus is 2004, a multidisciplinary expansion of the database. And then it is, of course, owned by Elsevier. And to compete with the Web of Science, which is in, under Thomson and Reuters in 2004. And in 2018, Thomson and Reuters, the Web of Science database was 
sell to the company called Onyx company and which renamed the web of science is Clarivate Analytics. And this is a short history of Scopus and web of science database. I hope this interesting history will help you to understand what is web of science, what is Scopus and what is science direct and overall Elsevier publication house. And obviously these are now dominating our research community. Okay. So in the next video, I will explain there are many other interesting story about research and research related issues in my channel. I hope you will subscribe and of course share this information with your peers and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.